Last year, you sold 700,000 Mercedes-Benz vehicles in China, which is shockingly more than twice as many as you sold in the U.S. On the one hand, congratulations. On the other hand, um, what kind of concerns have you seen so far when it comes to the coronavirus? We have had tremendous success in the Chinese market and grown significantly over the years. Uh, what we did uh, when this outbreak came is that we extended the Chinese New Year's holidays by another week. And we have uh, cautiously started up our operations in Beijing again. And I want to applaud all the hard work that our colleagues in China um, has, uh, has done uh, to get us to this point. But it's a little bit too early to say uh, where this is going. As far as your results, um, your margins are, seem to be the problem. Sales continue to hit new records. Are you trading profitability for sales growth? Uh, we have had good sales growth, uh, but also a good price premium vis-a-vis -vis our uh, main competitors over the last few years. So that's something that we want to keep. Uh, but we got to work harder on cost. Uh, if we want to drive margins up, and we're determined to drive margins up, uh, a lot of it's going to have to come from cost, both on the variable side and on the fixed cost side. The price premium, a lot of uh, Mercedes levels would say, comes from the fact that the vehicles are higher quality. Where can you cut costs? What are the biggest cost issues that you, that you see? Uh, with regard to the variable cost, a lot about is intelligence, you know, how do you approach the design of a vehicle and how do you take uh, cost out, but while at the same time improving the products, so I think there's a lot of potential there. And on the fixed cost side, as, as is the case with any big company, uh, you can never get lean enough. And we have started a program with uh, a whole range of measures to lower our overall fixed cost uh, structure. You talked a lot about your vision for the future. What kind of margins do you want to see at Daimler? Uh, we have put together a program for the next three years where it's very much about cost efficiency and also cost restructure. And in our capital markets day that we presented in November of last year, we said that we want to put a floor uh, in the 2022 timeframe on the car business, for instance, at around 6%. But of course, we have higher ambitions. The focus now, though, is to make this these next three years count. One of the things you want to do is focus on your core business um, which I would think is Mercedes-Benz cars, but you're also selling uh, vans as well as trucks, which seems like a completely different business segment. Um, how will you scale it down to just one core? Well, I would say trucks is just as, smart, uh, just as much part of the Daimler family as cars is. Uh, we're the biggest truck producer in the world, and in fact, in the States, with Freightliner, we're the leading truck maker. Uh, very uh, successful and profitable business, so uh, we view trucks as core as well. Would you be open to spinning it off though? I mean, you can still uh, work with the truck business, exchange technology, share and cooperate um, while you sell a 10 or 15% stake. We have no plans for that uh, at this stage. What about the investments in electric cars? I mean, it's gotta be a huge shift. You talked a lot about you've, you've, you've flipped the switch and you're ready to do that. Um, what are the biggest roadblocks? We have made a clear commitment towards the future of CO2 neutral mobility at Daimler for Mercedes cars and also for our commercial vehicles. Uh, so as you say, that switch has been flicked. Uh, it's a combination between a technological challenge, actually an exciting technological challenge, and of course changing your whole industrial footprint over many years. But we're determined to do this. Uh, we say that the brand promise of Mercedes-Benz is sustainable modern luxury, uh, the promise of a better future. What about the infrastructure issue? I know, in, at least in the US, Tesla seems to have gotten that right here in Germany or in Europe. It's more difficult to drive an electric car than a gasoline um, or diesel automobile because of the um, sheer unavailability of high-speed chargers. The charging infrastructure is ramping up, uh, and together with uh, four other manufacturers, we're actually building a high-power charging infrastructure also along the highways uh, around Europe as well. And of course, for the Mercedes customers, many of which have a driveway or have a garage, we have tailor-made solutions for you uh, because most of the charging actually happens at home. And we can see more and more companies also installing charging at work. Daimler does that, and we're investing tens of millions for our employees to be able to charge also at work.